few months ago, the NFL Network showed that fantastic documentary on the 93 team, perhaps the most fascinating season in NFL history. What were your thoughts as you kind of lived through that season and retelling that story? And how ta- <laughs> yeah, and how talented do you think that team was? Wow. Well, uh, my thoughts are, I mean, we were extremely talented. I mean, it was some incredible talent. It, it was fun to do that. The NFL Network flew me out to uh, their headquarters in New Jersey and was able to spend time with them. And I'm actually the guy who got on the phone and I uh, encouraged Sean Jones and uh, uh, Ray Childress and, and those guys to participate as well. And, and Sean made contact with Haywood Jeffries. And uh, I thought they did a good job. Uh, as far as my reaction, I knew that it was dysfunction. I lived it. Uh, but, you know, in looking at that, uh, you know, I, I, I couldn't remember that we had that much dysfunction and so much going on in, those, and in that 93 season and the season before, obviously, with the with the Buddy Ryan and Gilbert situation and with Baby Gate, and, and it was just on and on and on. So, and, and the fact that we were able to accomplish what we accomplished in spite of, you know, getting in our own way, tripping up our own feet, I mean, is incredible. And you talk to a lot of good football people, uh, they'll tell you that that was probably one of the most talented uh, uh, teams that they had ever seen. I mean, at just about every position. And, you know, the real shame is that we weren't able to bring the championship to Houston. And, uh, you know, I'm not sitting here wearing a Super Bowl ring uh, today. You know, William, some folks, uh, Oiler fans, would say the 93 team, the, the team that went 11 straight, went 12-4, and four and played the Chiefs in the playoffs, also might have been one of the best ever. But I kind of go back to the 91 Oilers when you ended up playing uh, the Denver Broncos. I, I feel like that was one of Warren. <laughs> It was one of Warren Moon's best years, and hey, I think you had 15 sacks and went to the Pro Bowl. Yeah. So, so what do you think of that '91 yeah. team? Oh, I, mean, I thought the '91 team was great. Now, you know, all three years, you know, we went to went to the playoffs. God, what was it? I don't know, six, seven years straight. Um, it's really hard to say. We go up there, we face some some legends. You know, we go to Denver, and uh, we feel like we got a great chance there. And, of course, you know, Elway pulled the rabbit out of this hat with a big drive on us, and like he's done on so many teams. And then we uh, we have the Buffalo thing, and then, then Kansas City. And just when you think, you know, Montana, you know, doesn't have anything left in the tank, you know, he, uh, you know, he puts on a good performance too. But it's hard for me to really say that, you know, one team was much better than the other. You know, a lot of the talent uh, was, uh, was uh, on all three of those teams, but. You know, again, it just gets back to the to the, the talent we had just through the years, just through the years. You could probably go a you know five six year stretch where we had some damn good talent in Houston. And you know, I I kind of recall not only in that Broncos playoff game, but of course the infamous Bills game. Defensive coordinator Jim Eddy got a lot of blame for that. But do you think that was a bit unfair? Because for me, I see similar reasons for both of those losses. I mean, not just maybe. Uh, not enough timely defense, but not enough ball possession by the offense and some untimely turnovers. Right. right. Well, I mean, you, you hate to point blames, and we're all in it together. Uh, you know, the fact that we were successful with Jim Eddy's defense through the year and, and had done well, uh, I don't want to throw Jim Eddy under the bus. And there are a number of things that really contributed to it. Uh, you know, I love Kevin Gilbride. You know, I respect him. I think he's a fantastic coach. I thought Buddy Ryan was a great coach, too. Uh, obviously, you know, it's, it's tough to keep focused and to, and to be successful when you have all that issues that were going on amongst them. But even with that, even with that, as far as, as Buffalo is concerned, I think one of the biggest things and what a lot of folks don't look at is the fact that, you know, when you have a high-powered offense, it's feast of famine. Uh, the run and shoot was great. We'll go against the number one defense. I remember we went up to Kansas City and Warren Moon threw for 500. We're all over them. And then the next week, can't remember who we played. And we can't score seven points. So, you know, when it's on fire, it was on fire. But at the same time, it's not the type of offense where you run out the clock and you're able to protect the big lead. You know, they throw the ball. So, uh, you know, once we had that big lead, you know, we didn't have the running game to really, you know, eat up the clock. And so uh, Buffalo was able to tee off and, uh, you know, get some big plays and get back into it. Uh, if you had a traditional defense, and again, I, I respect the running shoot. I just think that we should have had a tight end somewhere on the roster, you know, whether we use it, use them in a limited manner, a fullback on the roster, so that now you can offer that protection, you can offer those extra blockers when you want to, you know, uh, run your power game and run game. I mean, uh, I, that, that's just my take. A lot of the stuff you see, 
with these wide open spread uh, offenses, really an offshoot of you know some of the things that Kevin did uh, with the run and shoot. But yet they do have those additional players, so that you know when you face those times where it's implement weather or just for whatever reason things are not clicking, things are not clicking from an offensive standpoint. It's good to be able to have those uh, those guys on the roster to be able to now let's let's get back to you know dirty grunt football. And you know you, you know, through the years we've had some, some great teams that can throw it up and down the field. Well, you look at it, it's usually the teams with the good defense and the teams that can run the football that actually bring home the trophy, you know, at the end of the year. Well, speaking of those offenses and, and, and the ones that you guys had were so innovative under Jack Pardee. We, we lost Jack uh, last year, and in many ways the offensive system he implemented with the Gamblers and then the Cougars and the Oilers changed football from the NFL all the way down to the high school level. I mean, you see that on a daily basis. What kind of coach was Jack and – and what did you learn from being around him? I like Jack. He was a great coach. Him, first of all, he was a great human being, a great man, and I think everybody res- respected him. Uh, he was not the t- you know a fire and brimstone type of coach. And then I think in some instances, you know, the dynamics that were going on with Kevin and uh, uh, and Buddy, you know, may not have happened under you know a, a more forceful coach who actually took control. But you know, he was one that you know gives his uh, his coordinators a lot of latitude. And, uh, you know, kind of just sit back. And, and you still have coaches today that operate that way. So I'm not saying that he was wrong in doing that. Uh, but he was he was an outstanding man. He was a good football player. And uh, certainly, uh, you know, sad to see you hear that, you know, he's no longer here. You're listening to Houston Sports Talk.